Welcome. We are diving right into our nursing session today of the Future Ready Story County uh, Virtual Career Fair. With us today, we have um, Bree and Amanda. They are from area um, medical or area uh, clinics, hosp uh, the hospital, and um, I'm going to turn it over to them to introduce themselves, um, give you an idea of what they do, um, where they're working, what their working environment is like, and we will go from there. Bree, do you want to start? Good afternoon. My name is Bree. I'm the inpatient care supervisor at Story Medical. My working environment, the clients we serve are primarily middle aged to upper age geriatric. We are a swing bed facility, so we do lots of physical and occupational therapy. Not to say that we don't take care of younger adults coming in through our ED with more acute issues. So wide variety of people under one small roof. Hey, Amanda? Yes. Hi, I'm Amanda with Mary Greeley uh, Medical, Medical Center Human Resources. Um, we are located in Ames, Iowa. We are a 220 bed facility. Um, and we do care for both inpatient and outpatients. Thank you. All right. So diving right into nursing as a whole, we know that it's a really broad field. There's a lot of different moving parts and aspects and specialties. So what are some types of careers um, within nursing and what are the varying levels of education or training required for those um, positions? Um, I'll go first on this one. Um, so being a nurse offers a wide range of opportunities. Um, as far as nursing goes, Mary Greeley does hire LPNs in our acute rehab department and then also ADN, so two-year nurses um, throughout the hospital in both, again, inpatient and outpatient experience. And then we also um, have employed uh, at Mary Greeley BSN nurses, which are the four-year nurses. Um, and then we do have some masters prepared uh, nurses, um, which may be a requirement in some of the advanced professional positions. And I do believe that we do have employed um, one or two DNPs um, as well. Right. Here in the critical access realm, we do have an LPN on staff in the hospital side. Understand that Story Medical is attached to our clinics, so sometimes that can be confusing, but talking about hospitals specifically, we do have one LPN. The LPN has the advanced IV therapy course. Typically, we hire RNs at minimum with the two-year degree and um, BSNs. We have those um, going RN to BSN bridge education. In our ED, you might have heard before, we can hire advanced practice nurses, we call them mid-levels, and they can become ED providers in that realm. In the sector of the OR and outpatient clinic for us, those are RNs. Those need to be um, nurses that are capable of providing all sorts of tasks and circulating and scrubbing into the OR. And then um, for professional development here at Mary Greeley, to assist our employees to getting, you know, from uh, one position into maybe um, a promotional opportunity, we do offer tuition reimbursement. Um, and that is $2,000 um, for an employee that is working towards their two-year degree or their ADN. Um, and then $3,000 um, for a nurse that's working towards their BSN. And then $4,000 each year um, to assist anyone that would like to work on their master's um, degree. We also offer tuition assistance here. And we're actually going through a process of making sure that what we're offering is comparable and fair to our employees. So stay tuned for that. And you can inquire with our HR if you're curious about those exact numbers as that process evolves. Oh, that's an outstanding opportunity for um, future employees, that's for sure, especially those who are looking to enter the workforce in the next couple of years. Um, so within those, those different jobs, those different positions, which are the highest needs that you have right now? I would definitely say um, the bedside uh, nursing position is where we are in most, most need. That's where most of our nursing openings are. Sorry. That's okay. Um, yes, yeah, same here at Story Medical. The beauty of our hospital being smaller due to being critical access is that you have a ton of opportunity to cross train. 
For example, before I became supervisor, I worked on the floor on inpatient. I floated to ED and became certified in a trauma course that's uh, required for that, and then worked in our outpatient OR. So the opportunity to get variety here is there, but like Amanda said, the boots on the ground is always our highest need. You may or may not know that there's a nursing shortage across America. That's been going on for some time. So this might be a good segue, but your career uh, stability is definitely there in nursing. Nurses are needed everywhere. You can get a job in any of these 50 states and there's so many different types of things you can do. So if you get bored, you can transition. I did geriatrics for over 10 years and then moved into the hospital realm. So there's always, always, always something to fill your cup and also have that um, reliability in your career. So it's pretty safe to say that if someone comes out of school and they're ready to get into healthcare, there's a spot for them. They can basically pick their position. <laughs> That's awesome. That's an amazing opportunity. How do oh, you I want to point out, oh, ahead, Brie. Um, Amanda mentioned LPNs and we kind of talked about LPN. So what that means for your students is that is typically a certificate program. You're a licensed practical nurse. Your scope of practice is of course smaller than a registered nurse, but in other factors or in other sectors of healthcare, long-term care especially, you can really gain a bulk of your knowledge and experience while you, if you want to move on to your RN BSN programs are doing that as well. So you can be working while you're working toward that RN and uh, long-term care pay scales are a little bit different. So you might find that's actually a comfortable place to start as well. We don't, we haven't even mentioned certified nursing assistants. And so in high school, you can even take that course as I did and, and start you know, working and even just trying it on. Is this for me? Do I even like this kind of work? Do I have the personality for this? Is this fulfilling? And then, you know, you're not halfway through your four-year degree going, ah! <laughs> yes. Um, and then I know that, um, do patient care tax fall under the umbrella of nursing? Yes. Okay. And do those require two-year degrees as well? Or is that a certificate? <laughs> The CNAs um, are actually offered through a lot of the community colleges, um, and, and a lot of time they will branch out to the nursing homes for their clinical for that. Um, and they are 75 hour courses or the advanced um, CNA class is 150 hours. Okay. Awesome. How did the two of you know or decide that you wanted to go into nursing? Who wants to go first? Uh, okay, so I talk, I've been talking a lot. Um, I, like I said, I, I was a CNA in high school. I actually knew in eighth grade. Um, a lot of times you'll hear in nursing school, it's a calling and nursing is an art and a science. And it sounds a little corny, but it's so true. It's just something that you just feel drawn to. So becoming a nursing assistant, um, which full disclosure totally freaked me out. I waited almost a whole year before I had to retest before I worked in that field. Um, you know, it's a big, it's a big deal. It's like entering the gateway, if you will. But then um, after that, just getting really getting that human connection and getting for me, it was absorbing people's stories and just getting to kind of pick their brain about things. And um, one of my favorite questions to ask the elderly is what advice would you have for somebody my age and whatever age I was at that time, and just hear how they perceive the world or what they've lived through. Um, that's just really one of the best parts of nursing in my opinion. And I would echo a lot of that sentiment. Um, I, in high school and, and probably middle school at that, I just really enjoyed um, my science classes. And then, um, you know, the thought of this big healthcare system out there and understanding how that all works and diagnosing processes and being able to look at, at lab values and understand um, what was potentially going on with a person it was just very intriguing to me. Um, so I, I knew exactly the field that I wanted to go into and I'm glad that I did. I mean, here I am as an example to you of the um, you know, vast variety of things that you can do in healthcare and in nursing in particular. Here I am as an RNBSN and I'm working in human resources um, as a business partner at Mary Greeley and working with my leaders, my directors, my supervisors. Um, with um, succession planning, um, figuring out how they can advance their departments. Um, and it's just been a phenomenal move. I've been in HR for five years. Prior to that, I was an oncology nurse for eight and a half years and then neurology before that. So um, it just goes to show the opportunities that are available. 
Absolutely. And I'd like to take a moment to point out, I am one of those RNs with a two-year degree. And honestly, just a, a BSN is something that I've thought about, but it's not something that I feel is absolutely necessary for what I do and what roles I found myself in. I've been in leadership roles for about five years now and with just a two-year degree. So you can achieve lots of things at any educational level. Opportunities will present themselves. And there's this kind of unknown um, area where you can become board certified in a specialty. So you find yourself like Amanda could have, you know, taken a certification for being an oncology nurse and, and whatever niche you're in, there are those certifications to prove that you're very, very well versed in that area. So um, I actually hold a board certification for gerontology. That was just my niche. So um, there are things you can do at each point in your career and your educational level that will still make you credible and achieve you whatever success you're looking for. And I would suggest um, to students and anyone that's, you know, thinking about going into healthcare to always know what your resources are um, at your current place of employment. Um, and even as a student, reach out to your guidance counselors or career counselors, whatever you have in place. And, you know, research questions that you want to fully understand so that you can make an educated decision on exactly how you want to create your career path, educational path. Absolutely. What's the hardest part of your job? Um, I know, like, well, uh, which piece? <laughs> You know, I mean, it, uh, for me in HR, every day is a new day. I can not, you know, begin to fathom what be, may be coming at me from moment to moment, some of the employee experiences, things that they need assistance with. So every day is a new day. I do like that piece. Um, I think as um, a bedside nurse and then also in my current role, I'm just um, needing to be flexible and um constant interruptions. There's just always things coming at you because things are always changing and, and that's good. I mean, that prevents you from getting bored, I suppose. Yes. Uh, echoing a lot of that, what Amanda said, I think for me as a nurse, just a nurse, take away the titles and the roles. It's when a patient or a resident family member as a whole, when they're having trouble making a decision, for example, when it's time to transition their their home life, if it's you know time to move into long-term care and they were at assisted living or they're here getting rehab and um, they're just not quite ready for that or end of life things when people are you know really straddling that line and as professionals we you know a lot of times they'll say well what would you do and we can't really go there in detail, we can give them facts and just reassure them that, you know, no choice is really wrong. It's going to end up being what it is, but um, kind of that tug and pull of wanting what's best for patient, resident, family, and then also um, having to kind of stand on the sidelines and just, you know, let them sink or swim, so to speak. You can get really involved, um, emotionally invested easily. I'm certain of that. Um... What advice do you have for students who are considering going into nursing? Um, again, I would just reiterate, know your resources, know who to reach out to, really look into what you want as an end goal. Um, and I, I can give a good example of this. I, I've seen it um, many times um, while in HR and people you know, working towards their end goal is um, no, if you're thinking about going down a PA path or an NP path, so physician assistants, uh, physician assistant versus nurse practitioner, really know what that looks like. Um, because as um, a PA, you're functioning under a physician yet, while as a nurse practitioner, you are functioning on your own as a provider. Um, so uh, to get to a nurse practitioner role, you first need to get your nursing license. Um, whereas uh, a PA or physician assistant person would go through like a kinesiology uh, for your program, for example. So just really do your research. That, and then also do your research for your resources outside of school. Who, if you have children or you find yourself in, you know, whatever, wherever you're at in your lifetime going to nursing school, 
who is there to support you because it's the ride of your life. It's fast and furious, no matter which program you're in, there's a lot of information coming at you in a short amount of time. So you're gonna need those people to vent to. You're gonna to need to know what sort of financial resources you have because at some point you might not be able to work full-time and go to school full-time. It's just, it's so individualized, but knowing where all your cards land on the table and um, making sure you have good self-care practices. Absolutely. It's a great point. Um, so what exactly are clinicals and when can you start them? So clinicals are actually um, the uh, provider as a CNA, as a nurse um, with the patient hands-on care where you are lurk working alongside um, a teacher um, as well as uh, those uh, nurses that are working at that organization. And those actually start for like a CNA um, it, at, during your CNA education. And that is how it will continue when, whether you're working towards your LPN, RN, BSN. Um, those clinical hours are at um, a care facility, whether it be long term or acute care. Yes, exactly. So you have your classroom portion, you're sitting in nursing school, you have lab where you're um, talking to a mannequin and pretending like that's a human and then you have clinical. And that I find with younger students, brand new students, that's where you start to find your own rhythm as far as communicating with people. I mean, it, it's always an awkward time when it's brand new to you and you're just looking at somebody and taking their blood pressure and you're like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so it's a, it's a good time to just, they know you're learning, you know you're learning and starting to kind of find your groove with how you approach people, what's your style, um, your communication at bedside style. And also for those of you who find yourself in nursing, I would just encourage you to be yourself. I, I have nurses who love to joke around and the patients and residents love it. Of course, we know who and who not we can do that with. And some people who love to educate and that's their forte. And so as a team, it takes all of us and all of our dis different personalities and communication styles. So um, please don't ever feel like, oh, well, I'm not professional enough to be a nurse or I'm not, you know, X, Y, Z, because nursing, again, is so versatile and so flexible. Yeah, and I think clinical is um, oftentimes where people find their love and passion for a specialty. Um, you can get through a two-year program, a four-year program, and still not know where you want to end up, and that's okay. And a lot of people that I talk to through interviews um, and the application process that say that to me, I often tell them that, you know, um, in, a, in a hospital like mine, for example, Mary Greeley, 220 bed facility, I often encourage them to start out on medical telemetry um, because in any specialty that you go into, whether it's birthways or med surge, um, or you end up in acute care, it's always great to have that uh, cardiology piece behind you because a 20 year old laboring patient can have cardiac problems. It's across the board. Um, I know that DMAC has a program um, that high school students can start in. Are there um, age restrictions for that? Do you know, like, do, is, do you have to be 16 to, to start a CNA program? Is that something you might know off the top of your head? I don't know any age okay. requirements. I am not certain. Okay. My class was like 16 years ago, so who knows? <laughs> That's fair. But I do, I do want to say though, because I do meet with instructors and their students primarily as a recruitment piece to try to get people to um, apply and, and work here as part of my job, that some of those students are under the age of 18 and in high school. So I don't think that, you know, 18 is, is the cutoff. I mean, they are bringing students on that are younger than that and in high school. So I do, I can bring that understanding. Okay, I thought so. Um, let's talk a little bit about work-life balance. The a schedule for a nurse is is really, like, it's, it's intense. It's all over the place. Um, there are different shifts. Can you kind of explain some of the, the shifts and expect scheduling expectations that people going into nursing would, should have? So I'm sure that yeah. Bree and I, um, at, at both of our organizations, I'm sorry, um, yeah. have uh, somewhat day, evening, and night shift, whether they're eight-hour shifts or 12-hour shifts. Um, we have uh, full-time status, which is 72 hours every two weeks and 80 hours every two weeks, um, while also having regular part-time and part-time positions and including weekend package. So 
we're a 24 hour facility. Um, we need coverage 24 seven. So shifts all yeah. across the board. Same. So our RNs work 12, 7A to 7P, 7P to 7A. And then our PCTs, um, those direct care assistants, they work 6 to 2, 2 to 10, 10 to 6. So other places do eight hour shifts for nurses. Other places, um, long-term care, especially drawing on my experience, you do every other weekend in long-term care I did and um, some sort of weekend rotation. So that is something that's pretty standard across the board for nursing in that frontline role uh, at the bedside. So don't be surprised to learn that holidays, weekends, nights, we're 24 seven, like Amanda said. But the beauty is as you move forward, either within your organization or your career and find yourself either with um, some tenure at your place or you're in a different position like supervisory, you might not have to make those sorts of commitments anymore. All right. what's the, uh, what surprised you when you got into nursing? What was something that you were not expecting? Hmm. I know. What? And it's almost like, yeah, by this point in the game, Amanda, right? It's like, eh, not much surprises me anymore. Nothing <laughs> surprises me now. Yeah. Uh, um, I think I'll, I'll draw on advice from a mentor who is now an advanced practice nurse and she's worked decades in nursing. She told me I once I felt bad for crying about a resident's death. Cause I'm like, wow, I got to pull it together. And she told me the day that you don't cry anymore is the day that you need to reconsider what you're doing. So that was not so much surprising as reassuring. Yeah. I don't think I can top that. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, well, students, if you have any um, questions, please enter them now. Um, is there anything else, Amanda and Bree, you'd like to share at this time? Um, I think it's important when you are at the point where you are applying for positions, um, and again, we have entry level on up, um, it's important to look at the whole picture, look at benefits that the employer has to offer, tuition reimbursement, certification reimbursement, and any career advancement opportunities that you may be interested in along the way. Yes, absolutely. I know this crowd is probably young, but it's never too early to start thinking about retirement and um, benefits. That was a great, a great thing to add, Amanda. Um, you know, we we are a county hospital. We have IPERS that will roll with you everywhere. Um, I'm sure, Amanda, you have 401k. And, we have IPERS. You know, yep. I first, oh, hey, mm -hmm. yeah, so things, um, you know, you, you're young, but you'll start packing that stuff away, and then, you know, it's it's already begun for you, whereas somebody your age, maybe fresh out of high school, goes to work at Arby's, and that kind of stuff isn't automatically counted in, you know. All right, well, I don't see any more questions, so with that, I would like to thank you both for joining us today, and and introducing us to the ever-changing, ever-exciting world of nursing. Um, I know that you have busy schedules, so we really appreciate that. And um, I look forward to the next generation, some of these students that are on here. You might be, you might be their mentors here in, in a few years. So thank you very much, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck on your journey.